Welcome to my episode thoughts on the 1990s animated X-Men show, season 3, episodes 12 and 13. These episodes are Savage Land's Strange Heart, parts 1 and 2. So, before I start, please go into the description box. There is a link to donate to the SAG After Strikers and some videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And with that, let's start with Savage Land Strength Hard Part 1. So, yeah, Kazar manages to actually win against Sauron, but the sorceress shows up to... Uh, uh, Xanadane shows up to help him and puts him on a rocket that can send him back and one of the des the, one of the possible destinations is asteroid M which I I feel like I've heard that we're getting we we do get a story set there so that's a, a cool hint and yeah he goes to New York t so that the X-Men are nearby and there's a sign for Comic-Con complete with nuff said written so that's very cool and let's see yeah we um Wolverine is has his some of his strength sapped by Carl who then becomes Sauron and let's see yeah and Sauron manages to control Rogue making her see monsters which is a, a nice little cuz that's you know that's how you get someone to attack someone they care about, you make them imagine they're actually monsters. You know, there's a, an excellent... I, I'm not that fond of the... Oh, crap, I'm struggling to remember. I think it was I Am Legend. Not a big fan of the movie, but there's like this short that helps explain the the world and the... the yeah, apparently... The, the infected in that universe see normal people as monsters, and that's why they attack us. That, I thought, was a really clever idea. <laughs> Who died and made Wolverine Cyclops? And... Yeah, so the element of Storm's self-control. So... I love most of the episodes so far, and I suppose overall I do. I love a lot about these two episodes as well. Not a big fan of like doing a story where a black person and a black woman specifically has to fight to like we've been we've been told before, but this is when we see it actually like her actually lose control. Basically, Storm always has to maintain self-control and that, you know that by itself is a good message we all do have to you know everybody can you know we all go a little mad sometimes but it's important to you know self-control is important and I actually I liked they did this same thing the same story but with Xavier in an earlier episode showing that even this educated guy has you know there's still darkness inside him and I actually think it makes much more sense as a story for, you know, to be about a white man, which is, it's rare that I say this story should center a white man, but we white men actually have, uh, you know, and not like, not genetically, but culturally, because we're encouraged to be stoic all the time, we're not allowed to feel our feelings, and that's not, you know, some, the moment I say that, some misogynists are going to be, yeah, because women, no, it's not women who made that up. That was men. It's just enforced in part through, you know, yeah, some women, you know, might get mad at you if you show natural emotion, but that's because the culture has trained that into them. It's not genetic, but the, the, yeah, you know, for them to do it, you know, black women have been denied femininity since slavery, and, you know, rage is often seen as a masculine thing. 
and this idea that a, a black person has to control themselves because there's so much violence and and just so much power in there that if they don't control themselves it'll destroy the world you know that's a racist trope so yeah not really a fan of them playing it straight like this I do appreciate that at least Rogue also ends up losing control temporarily but then it's still like you could easily take away from this episode and I I worry some kids might have that women have to control themselves. I wish it was a white man who, you know, he could easily have been Wolverine who, you know, also completely lost control. You know, that's that's the thing. Like, Wolverine is a, a great metaphor for young white male rage. So I, I wish they had just, you know, it's not that you can't do complex stories with black people. See, the thing, actually... If they had just acknowledged this cultural thing and said, you know, there is a pressure on black women to control their, you know, the, the negative emotions. They're not allowed to, you know, if it, there's a lot of people, if they see an angry black woman, you know, yeah, if they see a, a black woman, they're going to think she's angry. And if she actually is angry, they're going to discount any rational thing she might, you know, it's it's a way to fight back against the civil rights movement. You know, if you don't take, if, if you think black people are just irrationally angry, you're less likely to listen to the extremely reasonable, like, you know, just recently there was this video, I, I'm not entirely, I forget if it's like, the, the, I'm not 100% certain if the original video is old, but recently Cavernackle covered this video where, like, there's this Russian, what's it called? Yeah, so the, the yeah, the full video is, Why American Conservatives Now Love Russia for Being Anti-Woke. I will link it in the description, and basically what he talks, you know, he talks about in that video this Russian ad that, you know, is trying to make fun of America for being woke and literally like one of the things is oh you know white people in America they're asked to like completely subjugate themselves to black people and it's like that's really that's actually what you think and and that's just it's it's so far from reality it's it's ridiculous the and that actually like you could so easily it would it would ring much more true if instead of a black man it was just a rich white man because they're like, oh, we got to get down on our knees and worship him. We have to let him get ahead in line. It's like, that's how rich white people are treated. So it's just, and, and honestly, rich, a lot of rich people in America in general are treated that way. Anyway, but but yeah, so back to the, the fun of the episode. I appreciate, you know, they, they land in the Savage Land and... I think it's Rogue who says, you know, I'll take a look-see, and Wolverine says, I'll take a smell-see. And Jubilee calls the, the dinosaur Barney to insult it. Jubilee is especially annoying in these two episodes. They do a fastball special. In the comics, usually it's Colossus throwing Wolverine, but, you know, Colossus is not one of the main members of the X-Men in this show, so... Yeah, using Beast instead makes a lot of sense. And I will say, you know, the ending with Storm Unleashed and the, the you know, to be continued. You know, that was really epic. And that brings us to Savage Line Strange Heart Part 2. And, yeah, they have to dodge, you know, this... this what are they called again? Um, stampede of dinosaurs. And Wolverine says, don't you just hate Rush Hour? Wow. And, uh, yeah, I did kind of approve when Storm destroyed these Garrick statues and then the religious people get really mad at her. That was like, yeah, that's, that's very, very realistic. And cool to get Garrick's backstory. And very cool when he starts making, like, rock hands and, like, grabs at people and just, yeah. And storm fighting Garrock was cool. 
Garrock fighting Sauron, and both of them, like, kaiju-sized. Really, really epic. And I think that might be about what I have to say about these two... I, I, I like, you know, again, you know, I mentioned before, you know, when, when this show will bring back a character or setting, you know, like, sometimes it's just part of an ongoing, like, I want to say it was season two, yeah, season two, a lot of it, you know, every so often it'll cut to Savage Land, and we'll see Xavier and Magneto there, they didn't necessarily do a different thing each time, because it's an ongoing story for several episodes, I guess most of the season, really. But here, you know, we go back to the Savage Land, we've seen it before, so instead they do something different. This time it's not Mr. Sinister, who I guess is still sand on that beach. If, if you put him into an hourglass, would he be the sands in the hourglass of the days of our lives? Anyway, the, the, but yeah, you know, now it's this sorceress Xanadane and Sauron. And Sauron, we saw him before, but he was more of a supporting player. And actually, you know, and, and we learned, you know, oh, Kazar is going to fight back, you know, and they already managed to rebuild, you know, the X-Men stayed for a while and helped to rebuild the, the village. So, yeah, they, they are able to fight back and they actually, you know, managed to overthrow Sauron. Very cool. Um, yeah, the, the backstory was really cool. I forget if... Because, see, I can't help but wonder, who was the guy who defeated Garrock that first time, you know, but maybe he'll return. I, I don't, it's not someone I recognize from the comics. Maybe he'll get a story down the line. Maybe there's a comic book that helps explain. But, yeah, it was, it, it was legitimately a cool thought, you know, and something I've seen in a number of comics where, you know, this idea that, oh, he used to be this, this regular, like, being he was you know for for a really long time he was believed and worshipped but then you know he he was able to actually come back as a living thing also and i think that might and right i thought the build up to that was was good as well you know at first it does like you know xanadane says no no, no he's real you know, Sauron keeps insisting he's not, you know, he's, it's a fairy tale, something we tell children, which, you know, for his entire life was true. And in Sauron, we do, of course, have uh, quite, you know, this is, this is quite a comic book trope, a character who's, you know, he starts out good, but then something happens and he gets an alter ego, you know, not just like a hidden, a secret, like, the way that Spider-Man, you know, puts on a mask, and that's his old, you know, alter ego Peter Parker, or Miles Morales, or Gwen Stacy, there's a lot. Um, it's a whole thing. There's a, there's a multiverse full of them. Uh, the, the, um, but, but actually, like, it brought a, a monster out of him that, you know, Carl, the original, could not control kind of thing. You know, there's, yeah, there's a, there's a few of them. In, in comic books, so cool to see. And and yeah, and this time it's actually not through, like we've seen, there's been a couple, you know, Morph had a similar thing, but that was because he was being mind-controlled by Sinister, rather than like just a, an actual transformation that wasn't at the will of another. I think that might just about cover everything right i liked you know early in in part one um rogue is like i uh, you know riding a horse beats flying and storm is like the the way you ride i don't know how you can tell the difference that was that was pretty funny and yeah that is that is everything for these two so yeah, uh, catch you again tomorrow for parts one and two of the Phoenix Saga. Make mine marvel.